Now, the problem with the G7 has always been this. On the one side, it is such a feature-rich, video-centric, compact form factor 4K powerhouse. On the other side, if you were more into running gun type of shooting, what would always mess it up for you was the abysmal video AF performance of the firmware version 1. But a lot of that has changed now with the firmware version 2, making the G7 a serious contender for a very good all-around YouTube camera. So here's what the G7's firmware version 2.0 video AF system can do. Now before we dive into the specifics of the video AF system's capabilities and settings, on a broader note let me tell you this. If you're shooting 4K, video AF is noticeably slower but virtually silent and doesn't even get picked up by the internal mic. On the other hand, if you're shooting anything lower than 4K, autofocus speed noticeably picks up. Unfortunately, something else is picked up, and that's the video AF noise on the internal mic. Okay, testing face tracking autofocus with the Panasonic G7. Currently shooting full HD. 25 frames per second. Let's check out how well it performs. Still has my face track. Oh, 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 it has problems. And seems like I'm lost being all the way back here. I'll return and it should focus on my face again from what I'm seeing right here. Let's see how fast it can pull focus. Looks pretty good to me, but let's see what happens if I turn around. Focus is on the background from what I'm seeing, not on myself. Let's see if that changes. And it does change. So overall, face tracking, autofocus in full HD, pretty damn good considering that price point. This time shooting MP4 4K at 25 frames per sec. Let's see how the camera handles itself here. Moving back, moving back, checking how long it is able to recognize my face. Oh, oh, problems, problems, and gone. Oh, all right, it's like a teeny tiny tad better than the full HD test, but being too far away, the Panasonic has problems in both video modes. Let's see again how fast it can pull focus. Yeah, did a good job. Well, as expected, it focuses on the background because there's a lot more contrast than on myself. But if I turn around, picks up on my face and focuses. Still, I feel like at 4K, the camera does have more problems focusing on my face. And of course, as expected, it is slower in focusing than in the Full HD video mode. I even did some testing on a bright sunny day just to check how good face tracking works when it's under stellar lighting conditions and it works really, really well. Even under difficult lighting circumstances, it struggled, it kept fighting and in the end prevailed. I then took the camera to the city at night to see how it handles itself there and apart from a very good low light performance, face tracking autofocus did an okay job considering the really difficult circumstances. Testing tracking autofocus on the Panasonic G7. All you gotta do is select tracking autofocus from the menu and you're gonna see a shape appear on your screen. Quickly half press the shutter button to start tracking. As you can see, it's now tracking my face. So let's see how well the Panasonic G7 performs at 4K using tracking autofocus. In semi-good lighting conditions, there's not a lot of light out here. Right, seems good so far. Well, it's an alright result. Okay, it still is tracking my face, my right eye that is. It's not the best result we could have hoped for, but an okay result. A 
Well, this time it's tracking my left jaw, so... Alright, it's lost me there for a second and it's now tracking my beanie. So, tries to keep track, 1080p, 50 frames per second, same procedure. Although I'm judging by a pretty small screen, it looks faster than when shooting 4K, for sure. And it seems to do a better job of tracking the face. Oh, it completely lost track. Let's track the face again. Okay, it's still tracking my face, but only part of it. At both video modes, 4K and lower resolutions, the G7 has a problem with retracking a subject. So the rule of thumb here is, with both video modes, keep what you want to track pointed at the camera. Should you follow this rule of thumb, the G7 can do very decent tracking, even in semi-good lighting conditions, because there's not a lot of light out here. So overall, I'd say tracking performance is all right, considering its price point of around 500 to 600 US. Now let's check out what 49 area autofocus can do for us when we're doing tabletop videography. As you can see here, as long as the subject is of considerably higher contrast than its background, there's no problem whatsoever. Unfortunately, if that isn't the case, like with Bruno the dog here, and the subject is of pretty much the same contrast as its background, it struggles a lot. And as sad as it is, poor Bruno hardly ever gets to be in focus, or it takes a long time until he is. Interestingly enough, shooting 4K, the camera has a much higher chance of focusing on Bruno. It almost always did but unfortunately again much slower than in 1080p to improve that situation we can decide exactly which autofocus fields are active let's switch to free autofocus autofocus area and let's just activate all the autofocus fields that are directly above the subject we're trying to get in focus don't forget to save your selection in this case i'll save it a custom one and set your selection now let's try it again. With the low contrast background, it's the same. Let's check out Bruno. That's a good first result. We can still see the autofocus system has minor problems focusing on Bruno, but overall, it's an improvement. Doing the same test shooting 4K video, the improvements are slim to none, really. In my opinion, it's pretty much the same as before. Our next step is to go to one area autofocus. Manually set the autofocus area either via touchscreen or cursor buttons and then scale it to the right size with either the front or the rear dial. Set it, unlock auto exposure. Now let's see what that does. Pretty good results in Full HD 50 frames per second right here. It's fast, it's responsive. I'd say it's a definite improvement compared to the previous tests. Now testing one area autofocus in 4K resolution again gives us very good results, but slow autofocus performance. Now the last step we can take here is going from a complete autofocus to say a semi autofocus and we do that by turning shutter autofocus to on. This allows us to enforce focus when we half press the shutter. Combined with one area autofocus, this pretty much gives us the ability to hit focus as quickly as possible and pretty much all the time. As you can see right here, we nail focus every time. The only downside to this obviously is it's not a complete autofocus anymore. It's a semi-manual, semi-auto focus. And there's another downside, forget about smooth focus pulling. It's the exact opposite, but it's quick and dead on. So I hope you got a good idea of what the video F system of the Panasonic G7 can do, what it struggles with, and whether to get this camera might be a consideration for you. I myself was caught completely off guard by this firmware version 2.0. I didn't have this camera on my radar at all. So I put this little Panasonic 12-32mm pancake lens on the body, start checking out video mode, and I'm like, wait a second, isn't that the camera that used to drive me nuts? Isn't that the one that used to raise frustration levels to new all-time highs? Because of drifting focus for no apparent reason mid-shot 
winning everything? Yeah, that's the one, but they sure must have done something to it. And I tried to find out and pinpoint what exactly it is they did, and I couldn't. I checked firmware history, but the only thing I could come up with was this post focus feature, which is actually for photography, not for videography. Whatever it is that they did, it sure improved video F performance. That's just a fact I stand by, because I used the old version and I used this version, and this one's a lot better. Now you're gonna run into some glitches here and there. That's a fact as well. It's just a contrast detect system that's not as good for videography as a decent face detect system is. But still, that camera's got a lot of good stuff going for it. And I'm reviewing this camera now because I'm actually considering making this camera my new all-purpose go-to YouTube vlogging family videography camera. Because it actually has everything now that I want in a camera. A decent video AF. It's not a great one, it's a good one, an okay one. It has a tilt swivel screen, you can hook up external audio, it's a small form factor, doesn't overheat, you can remote control it. It's a great price point, period. And it has stellar image quality and great usability. So there's not really much you can put this camera down for, in my opinion. So if you're as surprised as me and you like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it'd be greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome, and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. In any case, thank you so much for your time, thank you so much for your nice comments and your interest in the channel it really keeps me going thank you so much for that and hopefully see you in another video